Cataract surgery is one of the most common ocular surgeries and most of us will need to have it done in our lifetime. In today's video, I'll give you some things to think about before seeing your surgeon for the first time. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. Welcome, make yourself comfy, and get ready to learn about cataract surgery. Before we get started, this channel is all about eye education and I love creating this community of pupils. If you have a friend or relative this information could help, this video is easily shared right here from YouTube. Today, we're gonna to talk about five tips to prepare you for cataract surgery. In this video, I'm kind of assuming that your eye care professional or optometrist has already determined that your cataracts are ready and has referred you to a cataract surgeon for surgery. Your surgeon will guide you on the specifics of the surgery, but in today's video, I'll give you my top five tips for what to think about prior to surgery that will help ensure you get the outcome that you're seeking. Stick around for tip number five, as it's a brand new option that will make your post-op care easier. My first tip is that you really wanna cleanse and prepare your ocular surface for surgery to optimize the measurements that your surgeon will take and thereby increase the accuracy of the implant selected for surgery and reduce your risk of infection or side effects after the surgery. So ASKERS is, a, is the acronym for an ophthalmology organization of surgeons and they have an entire preoperative dry eye algorithm that highlights the need for optimization of the ocular surface before any kind of eye surgery. And I will make sure to leave the link in the description below. So before undergoing any kind of ocular surgery, I like you to cleanse your eyelids on a daily basis with Optase wipes. This helps reduce microbial, um, basically biofilm on the lids. It helps get those lids nice and clean. You don't want any extra blepharitis or um, you know, microorganisms hanging around for after the surgery. So cleansing the lids can be really helpful. The second thing I like are non-preserved artificial tears. Using those up until your surgery date is gonna help keep your ocular surface in better shape. The third thing about optimizing the ocular surface would be stopping any visine, clear eyes, roto drops, or any of the get the red out drops that you're using. Those do tend to dry the eyes more and going into surgery, we don't want the ocular surface to already be dry. The next would be to stop your contact lens wear and prior even to your surgeon's appointment, um, consider preemptive treatment before surgery. Consider something like Restasis, Sequa, Zydra. The dry eye medications can help reduce inflammation on your ocular surface optimizing the ocular surface, keeping it moisturized so that you have a better surgical outcome. In further discussion of optimizing that ocular surface, think about things like microblepher exfoliation. I talk about their, that during my blepharitis video. That's a way that your doctor can cleanse your lid margin in office before surgery. So a procedure like tear care is another consideration. If you have clogged meibomian glands, tear care can you know, using that heat and compression in office, clean out the glands, optimizing your tears and your tear film and your ocular surface for surgery. Same thing with IPL, if that's something that's been recommended to you, it's not a bad idea. If your surgeon is fine to wait on your cataract surgery, really working to optimize that ocular surface first before we go doing any kind of surgery on it. Because that does, again, optimize the outcome, gives you better vision in the long run, better vision right away, and it makes those surgical measurements more precise when we're dealing with a nice, clean, um, moisturized ocular surface. My second tip going into cataract surgery is to be, be aware of your own potential visual acuity. So do you have any other eye conditions that could contribute to what your best expected corrected vision is gonna be? You wanna ask your optometrist or your ophthalmologist what that potential acuity is estimated to be after surgery, because if, there's a chance that if you have underlying eye conditions like diabetic retinopathy, epiretinal membrane, macular degeneration, that your expected visual acuity will not reach 2020 after surgery. And it's important to know this mentally beforehand so you have an idea of the vision that you may recover. So again, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, epiretinal membrane, even corneal pathology, like a really bad corneal scar, or any other condition in your eyes 
that might impact you achieving that 2020 vision. My third piece of advice is to really spend some time thinking about what you want your vision to be after surgery. There is actually tremendous potential during cataract surgery to correct your vision in a way that you've never had it corrected before. So do you wish you would have gotten LASIK in your 20s? Because this is kind of your do-over. Have you been wearing multifocal contact lenses for years? If so, you can make it permanent with cataract surgery. You actually have a number of options when it comes to cataract surgery. The first of which is distance only in both eyes. So spherical lenses, which do not correct for astigmatism, are covered by most insurances. And so if your prescription is largely spherical, you can do distance only in both eyes and find yourself only needing to wear glasses for reading up close. The second option would be monovision. Also, this could be likely covered if you're a spherical patient without astigmatism. Astigmatism video up above, by the way. In monovision, we'll select your dominant eye for distance and your non-dominant eye for up close, and your surgeon will implant lenses that correct you for both distance and near. If you're thinking about this option, it's very important that you've tried this visual situation in contact lenses first. And so you'll want to request that of your eye care professional before you plan that for surgery. I would hate to have you get multi or monovision implants implanted and then hate it and not be able to get used to it. The third type of lens that you can have implanted is a multifocal implant. If you've worn multifocal contact lenses, you're likely familiar with the concept of having more than one power in the lens. And just like in multifocal contact lenses, multifocal implants help your both eyes see distance, middle, and up close. Now here in the US where I practice, these types of implants are an extra charge, so you may consider that as well. And finally, there are toric implants, which correct for your astigmatism. They're not toric multifocal implants at this time. So if you do have astigmatism, you may have to choose between correcting that astigmatism and correcting your presbyopia or trouble up close. By the way, I have videos on presbyopia that I can link above, and I have videos on astigmatism that I can link above. Ultimately, you're going to just have to ask yourself, am I okay with seeing distance but needing readers up close? And that depends on your acuity and your prescription going into surgery. So if you're like me and you've been nearsighted your entire life, the thought of being corrected at distance for me would be very appealing. But then you have to think, are you okay with having to grab readers all the time, anytime you need to see something up close? And those are decisions only you can make with the guidance of your surgeon. All right, my fourth tip is to know that between the two surgeries, so especially if you have both eyes ready, between surgery one and surgery two, it gets kind of weird. So let's just imagine for a moment that you're minus six in both eyes and you're gonna opt for distance correction in both eyes. Since your surgeon is only gonna do one eye at a time, there is gonna be a period of time where you're minus six in one eye and 0.0, .0 or close in the other. If you've only ever been minus six your whole life, it might be hard to imagine, but being that different between the two eyes can be very disconcerting, can make you feel really off. And there's also the little matter of how do you correct your vision during that time? So often we'll remove a lens from your eyeglasses in the cataract surgery eye, but if you're a minus six in both eyes, you're gonna have a pretty big difference between the two eyes. One lens is gonna be really thick and the other one's just gonna be air. You know, you won't even have a lens. And so this is often the most difficult time for my patients when they're in between eye number one and eye number two, as they kind of try to figure out how to see while one is corrected and the other is still pending. I think the biggest thing here is just being aware that this is the case because once I explain that it's totally normal and it's going to be about a, you know, depending on how long your surgeries are scheduled apart, it's just going to be weird for a little bit. And most patients say, okay, I can deal with it if it's not permanent. So this is not permanent. It's just how it is when you're done with one eye and haven't had the other one done yet. 
And then finally for tip number five, this is actually brand new, but I would advise you to ask your surgeon about a new combination drop for post-op that includes all three of the classic eye medications that we've typically used. So my whole career, the past 12 years, all of my post-op cataract patients have to take three separate drops and those drops each have a different schedule, but basically you're taking them for 30 days. But recently in 2020, there was a paper that studied the use of just one combination drop with favorable results. And I have actually just started to see patients come through. My local surgeons have started using these drops in some cases as well. Obviously keeping up with just one combination post-op drop is much easier. And if you're more likely to be compliant with just one drop than three, it's definitely worth asking your surgeon if they're using a combo drop before your surgery. All right, I hope you enjoyed all of those tips. That is it for today's iSchool lesson. I wanna wish you good luck with your cataract surgery. I know it's gonna go great for you. Make sure to ask all of these great questions of your surgeon. Today's fun fact is that there is a new combination eye drop available that does simplify cataract post-operative drops going from three to just one. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Class is dismissed.